This is a monstrous story about how the closest relatives of people can turn out to be traitors. A 17-year-old girl disappeared under strange circumstances, having quarreled with her mother and stepfather. At first it looked like she decided to run away from home. But after a detailed investigation, the police found out the truth, which gives you goosebumps. Seventeen-year-old Bernadette Walker lived in the English city of Peterborough with her family. After school, she enrolled in a local college and studied photography. She planned to connect her future life with creativity. Relatives and acquaintances described her as a shy, but very friendly and positive girl. She had a lot of friends, but most of the time she communicated with them through social networks. Her mother, 37-year-old Sarah, had nine children. She dated and lived with Scott Walker for a long time. Despite the fact that they were not married, the woman took his surname for herself and her children. In 2018, Sarah and Scott broke up, but continued to live in the same house. At the same time, Sarah started a new relationship. Scott was Bernadette's stepfather, but she used to call him father. All this seems very strange, but the family could not be called dysfunctional. At least, they did not have a shortage of means of subsistence. On the 17th of July, 2020, Bernadette spent the night at the house of Scott's parents, who actually replaced her grandparents. The next day, Scott picked her up to take her home. And here something strange began. According to Scott, during the trip there was an argument between them. When he stopped the car on the side of the road, the girl ran out and disappeared in an unknown direction. Scott hasn't seen her since, according to his own version. On July 21, three days after the disappearance, Bernadette's mother contacted the police. The call was made at 3 o'clock in the morning. Sarah reported that the last time she and Scott saw her was on the 18th of July. Some time after Bernadette ran out of the car, she texted her mother that she did not want to return home and planned to stay with her ex-boyfriend for a while. According to Sarah, this was not the first time her daughter ran away from home, but she always came back. They exchanged a few more messages, but on the 20th of July Bernadette stopped contacting. That day, around 1 o'clock in the morning, she wrote to her mother that she would be coming home soon. Her older brother decided to contact Bernadette's ex-boyfriend and asked her to tell her to call her mother. However, the young man stated that she did not appear at his house and did not even contact him. The mother wrote to several of Bernadette's friends, but they all assured her that the girl was not with them. After that, she decided to contact the police. The operator asked Sarah to tell the details about the day when the girl was last seen. When he heard about the quarrel with Scott in the car, he asked about the reasons for this conflict. Sarah admitted that she had a fight with her daughter the day before, which is why she decided to spend the night with Scott's parents. When her stepfather came to pick her up, he asked Bernadette to apologize to her mother. However, the girl reported that she was not going to return home, got out of the car and ran away. The cattle tried to catch up with her, but could not. The operator found this story very strange, but the police found no reason for a serious investigation. It looked as if the girl was in no danger, and she would return home sooner or later. But soon the case was transferred to another detective. And he was seriously alarmed by a very strange set of facts. The police searched Bernadette's house and also talked to Scott. A few days later it became known that the homicide department was interested in this case. During a search of the girl's room, the police found her personal diary, which forced them to look at this case from a completely different angle. Shortly before the disappearance, Bernadette wrote that she had quarreled with her mother, and also described the reasons for this quarrel. That day she decided to tell her mother the terrible truth. Scott had been molesting and abusing her for the past seven years. The girl also added that he stopped hidden cameras in the bathroom and her bedroom. Bernadette hoped that her mother would help her. 
but she only called her daughter a liar and began threatening her so that the girl would not dare to go to the police. Because of this quarrel, Bernadette decided to spend the night at her grandparents' house, and the fact that it was Scott who came to pick her up the next day seemed very strange to the police. Detectives questioned Scott, and he did not deny that he installed cameras in the toilet. However, his acquittal raised even more questions. He allegedly did this because Bernadette was hiding candy wrappers there, and her stepfather wanted to catch her on it. Of course, the police did not believe this and began to dig deeper. Having punched through the information about Scott's smartphone, they established another disturbing fact. The man's phone was turned off for 90 minutes just after he picked up Bernadette from his parents' house. As soon as his smartphone turned on, Scott called Sarah. The police did not have a recording of the conversation, which lasted nine minutes, but all of the above was already enough to make a very sad assumption. A very creepy theory loomed before the detectives. Scott could have killed Bernadette right after he took her. For the next 90 minutes, he could hide her body by turning off his phone in case the police later punched his location that day. Then he called Sarah, told her about what had happened and asked her to help him cover up the murder of her daughter. The detectives understood that if this theory was true, the girl's mother was guaranteed to know the truth and helped him. While the police were working out this terrible version, Sarah and Scott were not sitting idle. The mother called on the public to help in the search for her daughter, distributed and pasted leaflets. The stepfather wrote a touching post on social networks, urging Bernadette to get in touch and say that everything is fine with her. He also added that the whole family is worried and loves her. Seven weeks after Bernadette's disappearance, the police announced that the case had been reclassified. Now it passed as a murder without the presence of the victim's body. Such cases are extremely rare, because it is very difficult to prove someone's guilt without a body. However, detectives believed that the girl was no longer alive. Immediately after the requalification of the case, they arrested first Scott, and then Sarah. But where, then, did all these messages that Bernadette sent to her friends and mother after her disappearance come from? By that time, the police already had an answer. They tracked the movement of her smartphone and came to the conclusion that since the day of the girl's disappearance, the phone had been in the area of warehouses where storage containers were rented. After examining the geolocation of Sarah and Scott's smartphones, the police found that they also repeatedly came to that place within two days of Bernadette's disappearance. Thus, it looked as if they were the ones who sent these messages from her phone. Another fact spoke in favor of this version. One of Bernadette's friends, who received messages from her account, shared his suspicions with the police. According to him, the style of writing was completely different, and he initially suspected something was wrong. With all the information in hand, the police charged Scott and Sarah with obstruction of justice. Soon, an article about the murder was also added to the accusations against Scott. The man denied his guilt and insisted that the girl really ran away from his car. At the same time, he could not tell the police the exact place where it happened. As for Sarah, she was much more accommodating. When the detectives laid out the available set of evidence in front of her and announced the period for which she risked going to prison, the woman began to speak. Sarah admitted that she sent messages from her daughter's phone and accounts. On the day of Bernadette's disappearance, Scott called her and demanded to help him cover his tracks, but the woman insisted that he had not told her about the murder. She only said that he threatened her and her new lover with violence if she refused to help. Sarah began to adhere to the version according to which she helped the killer only out of fear for her own life. At the same time, detectives found out another strange moment. After the disappearance of her daughter, Sarah searched Google for how to track a mobile phone. This indicated that she was making serious efforts to conceal the truth. Despite the confession, 
the detective still had no idea where Bernadette's body was. Due to the fact that Scott turned off his phone, they couldn't even roughly select the search area. Scott himself, of course, was in no hurry to share this information, because it would confirm his guilt. But he still could not escape punishment. On the 10th of September, 2021, the final court session was held, and Scott Walker was found guilty of the murder of Bernadette. He was sentenced to a life sentence with the right to be released no earlier than 32 years later. There is one point worth clarifying here. In Britain, there is a law that prohibits a criminal from applying for early release if he is found guilty of murder, but the victim's body has not been found. In other words, Scott can expect to get out of prison only if he names the place where he hid Bernadette's body. As for Sarah, she received six years in prison for obstructing justice. This verdict outraged many people, because the woman shamelessly covered up the murderer of her own daughter. But the court could not impose a harsher sentence, because they had no evidence indicating that Sarah really knew about the murder, even if it was very obvious. The police continue to comb the places where cattle could hide the girl's body, and sooner or later she may be found. This story once again shows that even the closest person can betray in such a monstrous way. It's hard to believe that a mother could do this to her daughter, but there's no escaping reality. As for Scott, he deserves to spend the rest of his life in prison. This cowardly man decided to kill the girl who called him her father, just to hide his dirty deeds. Take care of yourself and thank you for watching.